was yeah. it was too slow. You so, consider just paying like I don't know twenty dollars and just getting sent to your so house. So Bantu just sort of came along at the right time to be a new distribution and one based on Debian, which was already known to be a good base and all whatever, you know. But anyway, so Unity, I I think like it's just it's just aimed at new users really. It, it's supposed to lure people into desktop Linux. I mean, I I used to think as well how sort of like at times how like yeah we've got KD, we've got Doom too, but it's all a bit. It's a little bit boring in a way. It's, I mean, is it really that much better than Windows in a way? I mean, from an interface point of view, is it really that much better than Windows? I mean, GNOME 2 or well, KDE? There is the uh, distinguishing between the applications that come with the desktop environment. <clears throat> then there is the, uh, I don't know if I should call it the shell or the desktop. Yeah, the desktop. But, I mean, in the case of KDE, I'm looking at KDE now, and I have the, like a slideshow of my all kind of like 10,000 photos of friend and that. Changed all the time. But what I'm actually looking at mostly is Plasma desktops. Plasma would be my widgets, uh, which would be based on very open technology, uh, and it would be things like my taskbar, which is also an extension or an addition to the uh, to the. Um, I think it used to, it used to have a different name, like it would be K panel or K kicker or just kicker things like that. But it's basically all based on based on the Plasma uh, desktop. You know, workspaces yeah. and everything. Yeah. So then you have the applications. Now, I I heard one of the issues was with the uh, uh, with the interfaces like the ones they tried to introduce now in GNOME and in Unity, is that it kind of breaks down the notions of how you manage Windows. Like you have to move the mouse a bit more. Uh, once you get the Windows around and you basically get a canvas to on which to render the window, so you get the window decoration and you have a canvas that defines the boundaries of the uh, you know the canvas in which to to render the the dots and the points and to draw the lines and everything else that X is supposed to be doing, uh, and that's basically everything around the application canvas is is just the is just the what you call the desktop environment mostly. Uh, you might have some widgets there, you might inherit some properties from Qt or from GDK, but uh, but KD, yeah, I mean. What was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, we had KD and GNOME, and then there was this, like the walls in a way. You know, we had like the browser walls, obviously. The you know uh, anything else we use Internet Explorer, but yeah. then we had the dis- desktop environment walls as well to an extent. The KD views GNOME. Like some people would be like, oh, KD is the best. GNOME is GNOME isn't very good. I mean, even now, you know. In terms uh, of functionality, I think it's far enough to see that just about anything that GNOME I think KD do, can do. do uh, more, but not, you cannot say the opposite about it. I can no. barely think of anything that I can do in GNOME that I couldn't somehow do in KDE. Yeah, yeah, I and I think that. that's by design. I think GNOME tends to remove uh, spurious options, uh, usually under the claim of it being simpler. And this is why Linus Torvalds was complaining about uh, no, KDE yeah. moved to GNOME. No, no, yeah, even this is my GNOME seamless too. I think he tried uh, a lot of them. He just yeah, he complained about KDE when it went to KDE 4, I think it was. But more recently, he's complained about GNOME 3. So, so give, give him a year and go complain about XFC and then he's going to move to command line or something. And then... <laughs> cool. and then so he actually then, does work in command line. If you actually check, he, he still uses Pine. He uh, uses Git. I, mean, he, uh, he just, I, I don't think maybe he uses Emacs as his editor, but I'm not, I'm not too sure. He's, I think he uh, might be on Fedora, but without... Yeah, he does, he does Fedora, yeah. yeah, but he uses a... He just opens terminals as far as I know. He still works in a very uh, uh, old-school fashion, to put it politely, so... Uh, which which I that don't think. That's a good article by that um, Buchan about, like you say, old school and living in the past and how it's like okay to live in the past actually. It's okay for most. The, when I, when you administer a server or monitor or things, it's probably fine. Uh, depends on your habits. I think the uh, learning curve is what changes. So if you're already mastering VI and Emacs. You might as well stay with them in many cases if that's your development environment. It's already development. Uh, either SDK or editor of choice. Right. You'll yeah. be fine because you know the shortcuts. But if you pick a new user <clears throat> and you say, well, the way to save is you press these keys to get into the menu and then you have to press this sequence here. To have them even memorize these things without seeing the menus, it's really hard. <clears throat> it takes you a while to teach them how to do that. If they already know that because they learned it sometimes in the back in the 1990s or something, you know, they know that. It's instinct. They don't even think about it. I mean, certain things, certain shortcuts, you, if you ask the person what is the shortcut, they, they can tell you. But if you put them in front of the keyboard, they'll press it because they, they have just, uh, um, you know, 
uh, muscle memory of sorts, and they, they can just press things because it feels right. Uh, and that's what happens with certain editors and certain mail clients and stuff. Like that. uh, people so, get, yeah, people get used to that that software. It could, you know, it the, can be the, old brain, the brain is built with the expectation model. The brain is built to work with certain applications. Like they sense the application, they feel what they have to press to work in a certain way. Uh, and certain application try to make it more use the uh, metaphors in a simpler way that would remind people what they do on a desk. So things like notion of attachments. Uh, well, I don't think they should exist in general. I think people should link to things peripherally. But uh, but the notion of trying to treat and describe visually an attachment is like this thing with a paper clip, like to say this is something on your desk attached to something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. So. Yeah, people get used to the software, and I was, I was just gonna quickly add it. I was gonna say something like this earlier, but I'm just gonna add it in now. Uh, and people get used to buying their, they get used to buying software as well. And, or getting, or they get, oh, Windows, it's like you go on Windows, and it's all this, like, there's a lot of freeware, and there's a lot of programs you buy, so, that is open source as well, but, you, you know, it's kind of, I think it's understandable why certain people are gonna think like, oh, software is only good if, if it's bought. Like this, College lecture I had, it was fun. it was kind of this guy thought Norton was better than the McAfee as well, which I thought was a bit what. But anyway, he he he. I he, wonder he, I wonder if he thinks the same with girls. <laughs> he he, he it's basically it's, no, it's, it's a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, he yeah, I know he was trying to joke, but anyway, um, he basically thought Mc yeah uh, he 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 basically said to me like he he was one of these old guys and he. Seem to think that uh, that both yeah that most software that was good you had to buy is just nonsense. We got all this great open source free software, you know. Yeah. So anyway, that quickly uh, so back to desktop and mine and stuff. So yeah, KDE and GNOME and it's a bit like Windows and some. I mean, Microsoft look at the competition. I think copy from KDE and there was that fun, there yeah. was that video where they had a KDE computer in Australia and they. Well, it's on YouTube somewhere. And oh, they, it's still be, it's still happened the and they, set, that. and they go into Australia and supermarket, and it's really KD and they say people on <laughs> Windows Seven. <laughs> yeah, it's a ZDN FP. I, I can't remember the name of the. Area. It's now on YouTube yeah. still, I believe. Yeah. So. I, I remember a couple of guys who did that. They, still don't really, they don't. They didn't know it was. It's like Windows Seven or whatever. They didn't know what to start. Yeah. Well, they were impressed thing. with the functionality. Uh, <clears throat> some some of the concepts in uh, uh, KD actually KD four. Uh, around 2004 and 5, I, I saw them doing mock-ups of, uh, of doing a combined progress bar. It basically mm-hmm. combines the uh, progress in all the kinds of processes you have in desktop. Uh, and uh, this was eventually implemented in KDE 4, which was released quite a few years back. And in, now Microsoft shows mock-ups of Windows 8 and stuff, and that basically copies the same functionality into Windows. And, uh, yeah, and it can say, well, Windows 8 is going a bit more, it's going to, uh, bit, in some ways, a bit more like GNOME 3, I guess, with Unity. Because it's going to be more for touch screens uh, as well, but then you can have the old Windows 7 classic interface as well. And then you can have apps on the desk, on the start, on the when you turn it on or something. Or going by those videos, I saw video I saw. Um, so all that mobile phone like apps. Uh, yeah, they really need to. Yeah, so because need because to, Microsoft is doing so well in mobiles, you know. So they. I think no, no, <laughs> yeah, success. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah, actually, yeah, they're, they're doing really well in mobile. It's so popular that uh, you don't hear about I, I don't, it. I don't, you don't I hear about any problems point. with it. That you don't hear about any problems with it. No, no, no. no. I, I heard about it's doing so well in in mobile, but I heard about Android. But I was like thinking, what's Android? Oh, uh, well, Microsoft makes money from Android, so they're not doing. Microsoft is not doing too bad. I was trying to do that, but yeah. They only got the HTC deal or whatever, where they get five dollars. Or every HTC sold with Android or something. Yeah, I, I think uh, what I've heard from the uh, YN is that the <coughs> Microsoft claims it to be Android deals, but it turns out it's probably mostly to do with uh, Active Sync, which is something that yeah. works with. And apparently they sell, yeah. and apparently they get more money from the, those kind of deals than they actually do from selling Windows Phone 7. Yes, because of the numbers of sales, but I think the uh, best thing to do is to try and get rid of all this. Like Windows-like functionality, uh, even even getting rid of the uh, uh, FAT32 uh, or FAT16 file systems in general, not not to get rid of the functionality to interpret these, but to try not to to pre-install these things in devices. Just let's try and keep things in uh, file systems that we uh, 
what we know aren't going to give Microsoft any ammunition. Uh, I'm going the uh, location tables. Actually, some of the deals that they call innings deals turn out to be just uh, fat, you know, FAT 